The Labour Party was founded on the 27th of February 1900 by Keir Hardy. It, is, it quickly rose to um, probably the second most dominant political party in British history, sadly after the Conservative Party. Um, the Labour Party, for the times they exist, has standed for workers' rights, helping others in need, changing and improving society, and creating a more egalitarian society, which works for the many and not the few. So, um, we're going to talk about why Labour have been the greatest party in British politics. We're going to talk about Labour's legacy, and we're going to compare it to the legacy of the Tory party. So, here is a list of things which the Labour movement has been responsible for. So, the weekend. During the Victorian times, kind of the industrial revolution, the industrial era of Britain, people, and even children, would be first forced to work ridiculous hours. Um, kids could be forced to work for days non-stop, seven days a week, or six days a week, 365 days a year. They had no time to rest, they had no time to catch up, and they had no time to do what they wanted to do in their life. So they would just be constantly working and working and working like slaves to capitalism, forced to do so to be able to earn money and live. Um, the Labour movement, through protesting, through um, efforts in Parliament, and as a whole, brought forward the weekend, which gave all workers two days off and a five-day working week, which has been a lovely thing, which we very much take for granted and is incredibly important. It means that people aren't overwork, aren't overused, and can and can live a reasonable life with a nice um, work-life balance. We should be incredibly grateful for it. It's very beneficial to us all. And really imagine what life would be like if, to for our jobs, we didn't work five days a week, but work six and a half for ridiculous hours. Second of all, even though the laws for overtime pay are not black and white, there's kind of a grey area of the laws of overtime pay in this country. The labour movement have kind of brought forward and the Labour Party through campaigning have brought forward um, overtime pay which means if you do work overtime doing a job you get paid for the extra work you do and that's completely fair and the problem with this is we're with it before is if you don't get paid overtime pay your employer might say okay we're gonna pay you for eight hours a day five days a week they might say okay you can do half an hour before work 50 minutes um, after work and you don't get paid for this so you're basically being enslaved by the company they're saying you have to do this work you're not going to get paid for it and you are in a place where you cannot refuse to do this work or we will fire you Th that's what companies subjected workers to quite often and through the labor movement companies don't really do this anymore and it wasn't really always through the party policy or government but it was just through pressure from the party often for companies to improve their ways and publicity which has been a major part of the labour movement. So then there's um, the eight hour workday, which I kind of touched on before. Another thing brought by the Labour Party and the Labour movement. So the eight hour workday means that you work 40 hours a week. The normal job says you shouldn't really work more than 48 hours a week, which is slightly more than eight, but a typical job works eight hours a week. This means that you aren't subjected to working 12 hours a week or 13. 13 hours a day or 12 hours a day, you can just have a normal job with time to relax, rest, and have a decent work-life balance, of course. In the industrial era, this wasn't reality. Um, people would often work for hours and hours on end without rest. Of course, this would be incredibly unfair. The Labour Party has protected workers from being forced to do stuff like this. They have to have a nice work-life balance and not and not be forced to work constantly. Another good, good piece of policy which has been made by the Labour Party and the Labour Movement, which we need to be incredibly, incredibly grateful for. Also, the minimum wage has been brought in by the Labour Party, which, which should have been brought in years before, but never really was. And 
the reason why the minimum wage is so important is that people get a pe fed a pay uh, get paid a fair price for the work they do. If you get um if you do an hour's work, you should get paid um the current wage is like eight pound thirty an hour, and that is law. Even though some companies try to break it, which is terrible and disgusting, that is the law. And this once again means that companies like they did in the eighteen hundreds and early nineteenth century won't be able to pay you like one p an hour, pay you ten pounds a year, and you are forced to do this just to survive. And and they give you the tiniest little amount for all the work you do. The minimum wage stops this from happening. It means that everyone with a job can live close to. Now in the Tory era, it's harder to, to sustain a decent life where you don't dip under poverty line. But normally the minimum wage ensures that if you work, and if you work for a proper week, you should be able to rent or own a house, have a property, afford water, have heat, and have be able to spend some time and money on yourself. And that's something we should be incredibly, incredibly grateful for. If the labour movement didn't exist, and the Tories had their way, workers would still be paying, being paid 10p an hour, and be working, and be working very hard for no pay, and being pleading, pleading to get more money from their boss, just so they can afford to give their kids a meal and survive it, it it really if we didn't have the minimum wage that we have now or before the minimum wage the law was about paying people the um we really we really would live in still kind of a dickensian um an spectacles era where workers were abused by their employers and lived horrific lives with terrible conditions no money and often um, died of um, of lack of means to live, and that that is what the reality of Britain would be if we didn't have these regulations towards people what people get paid, and we didn't have campaigning to pay people more. Also, we get paid holidays. Another thing which comes from the Labour Party, yeah, believe it or not, another thing we should be grateful for is paid holidays. So before um, paid holidays that came in or pressure to pay people to go on holiday, four companies came into play. Um. You could you could uh you could go on holiday, but you wouldn't get paid by the company. And essentially, if you weren't earning much a year, you couldn't afford to go on holiday. Not just because the holiday took cost too much, but you could lose your job, or you could just not get paid for that time. Not be able to pay the rent, not be able to pay for food, not be able to pay for the holiday, not be able to pay for your kids, etc., etc. And I think. In a, in a society we live in, we all have the right to to a holiday. To have many weeks, I think like a, f a good four or five weeks a year, I believe, even more. We should have to take time off, to take rest, to spend time with friends, families, loved ones. And, and really experience life. Because if we didn't have paid holidays, a lot of us would be forced to to work every day of the year even on Christmas, which also refers back to kind of the de Dickensian times, like Bob Cratchit working on cri being having Christmas as his only day off for the whole year, not being able to spend any time with his kids, not being able to live life to the fullest, but being stuck in a job all the time. And I think that can't happen, and that doesn't happen anymore because of paid holidays. Another thing we should be very grateful for, and grateful for because of the Labour Party. And the labour movement, of course. So, furthermore, sick days. So, with zero-hour contracts, which Corbyn wants to ban, zero-hour contracts are, um... It's a way of employing people where you pay them just for the hours they do, and they don't know if they're going to have a job the next day or the next day, but you call them in the day and say, OK, you're going to work three hours a day. And what zero-hour contracts does is... It forces people to terrible conditions, no guarantee of paid holidays, sick pay, safety standards, minimum wage, and stuff like this. And these people are forced to work in terrible conditions without these protections for um um for for um to make a living. And even though this doesn't exist in zero hour contracts, we have sick days. Without sick days, like what happens in zero hour contracts. 
we would be forced to go to work if we we if we had had the flu or if we had had the norovirus or if we were just really 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 ill we even had even had stuff worse like cancer or like were pregnant or had heart disease you're recovering from a heart attack you'd be forced to go into work or not make any money and this is disgusting on so many levels that people can be ill vulnerable in the worst positions of their life and their employer can have the guts to go you have to come in today or you're either going to get fired or you're not going to earn any money and not going to be able to pay for food for property for heat etc and when there aren't sick pay and there isn't sick pay from companies what happens is people are forced to go to work when they're incredibly ill sometimes die of heart attacks of fatigue of just extreme sickness some women have even been forced to give birth in the toilets of sports direct because they do terrible zero hour contract deals which exonerate people from the safety standards and the welfare standards that the labor movement have given us if ever we feel ill need a day off or even in a really bad position in our life like having cancer like having a heart attack having a really bad disease we should be grateful for the labor party and the labor movement for allowing us to be able to get paid and given the time to recover because if the Tories had their way they probably they this probably wouldn't be in place for a very very long time it would be in place now but a lot more people would die as a result of it and they don't want to get rid of zero hour contracts which exonerate people from sick pay so uh, once again safety standards created by the labour movement and the labour party Um, safety standards ensure that when you work, your employer um, makes sure that the, the the place you work, your workplace, is safe and is fit to work in. That you're not in danger of injury, of death, of sustained illness in this area. So, for example, um, safety standards ensure that your employer can't force you to work in um, a very dangerous factory among very dangerous machinery like was done in the industrial era where people get their legs and limbs chopped off die from septic wounds um, catch diseases every day employers can't make you work in a room filled with as asbestos where you're at danger of getting getting sustained injury you're, if you're a builder your your employer has to make the proper safety precautions when you're doing your job so you don't get injured without this work would be very dangerous for a lot of people and some people would even need to risk their lives to make a living and to pay for their food property heating etc for them and their kids and their wife or their their husband their kids etc in life so for any of you who do could work in dangerous conditions you should be very 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 grateful for the Labour Party for bringing in these standards which um, ensure that you're safe and your your life is protected at all times so once again another law which was brought in by the Labour, labour movement was child labour laws um, so child labour laws Furthermore, ensure that if you if you're a kid, yeah, you can you can have a, like a little job, fourteen plus, but you can't work a certain amount of hours. You can't be exposed to anything remotely dangerous. You can't be forced to work by parents or an employer against your will. Um, and you have to go to school, and 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 not not do sustained labour. So these protect kids from being exposed to the to the working conditions and to the sheer amounts of work and um, jobs that they were forced to do in the industrial era once again. Um, and for us kids, 200 years ago, we probably most of us kind of middle class or working class kids who aren't part of the kind of higher or upper middle class 
we would probably um, be already working in the factory right now. Risking our lives every day and getting paid nothing for it. Being depressed, being beaten, etc. And we should be very proud and appreciative of the Labour movement and the Labour Party for what they have given us. So, once again, health benefits. They were brought in by the Labour Party in the, um, I think it was in the, like, 1916, something like that. They were brought in by the Labour Party in the early 1900s, or the 19-teens. Um, and it ensured that if you had a, had a, um, kind of, uh, disability, which meant that you could not work, an illness that meant you could not work, or you were in a position where you needed monetary support to survive, that the government will give you it. Because before, let's say if you had a heart condition, or if you um, were paralysed, you got cerebral palsy, the government just go, no, we're not going to help you. You can fend for yourself, you can get a job. And that's what the Tory government really say now with the um, um, DWP and the ESA. They, they tell people that they should go to work who are two weeks from dying of terminal cancer. And thanks to the Labour Party, if you have terrible conditions, or if you have a terrible disability, you get paid and you're not forced to work, because you shouldn't be forced to work, and you should have the money fit for living, and, and maybe having a decent life. I don't think that's unfair, I don't think that's uncalled for. What, what a lot of the right-wing press say is that um, benefits, uh, ben people on benefits don't deserve it, they're scroungers, when they're people with very bad disabilities, life-crippling conditions, who just want to have enough money to maybe have a decent life and survive. If you have a disability, if you have a crippling illness, and you, you're getting paid for food and electricity and heating and a property, etc., be grateful for the labour movement because if anyone else had it their way, you wouldn't get the things you're very grateful for and should be very grateful for right now. Even though you do deserve it, you should. You should. We should all be appreciative. Of um the of the um labour movement because if if uh, if it was the other way around, disabled people would be completely unfairly um <laughs> forced to go to work or just left there to starve on the streets. So if you're in that position, remember it was the Labour Party who brought you stability in times of dire need. So next, and it's my favourite one, probably the coolest thing I think the Labour Party have done coolest thing we've ever done in Britain, especially post-war, was creating the National Health Service. I think the National Health Service is the thing I'm most proud of, more than anything, in this country. And the National Health Service ensures that we get free health care for our whole of our lives, from, I like the phrase, from cradle to grave in this country. Whatever happens to you, however, wh whatever position you're in, you can walk in to uh, um, a hospital any day of the week, any time of the day, and you can get free, brilliant care. And that's one of the things we should be most proud of in this, c this country. If you've ever been to doctors, if you've ever had a broken leg, if you've had a, ever gone through a really, really, really bad um, period of health, and you have, you have had help by the brilliant doctors, nurses um, and staff at the NHS you should be thankful and we should all be thankful for the Labour movement and the NHS which was created by a Labour Party by Clement Attlee and Nye Bevan in 1945 this is, I think this is our country's greatest asset and it was brought along by the Labour movement and the Tories opposed it they still want to get rid of it, they're doing the most they can to destroy it and labelled the reverse the cuts they made and create an even better National Health Service. They're the ones who create the National Health Service and they're the only ones who can save it. They will not privatise it and give it away like the Tory party. So NHS, if you've ever received free care from the NHS, that is because of the hard work of the Labour movement and the Labour, Labour party. So, firemen, finally, uh, sorry not firemen, finally. We have got retirement security. Oh no, sorry, we've got two more. So, 
So, retirement security. Retirement security um, includes pensions. Workplace, pe workplace pensions. A scheme made by the government, by the labour government, by the labour movement. Which means when you get old, you're not going to be left there after working for 50 years of your life, providing for children, for grandchildren, and being a great asset to our country, socially, economically, and really helping us out. We don't just leave you to um, manage by yourself, to have to work till death just to be able to stay alive. We say, okay, for the last, for the last 10 or 20 or 30, for however you long live, years of your life, you should be able to retire, stop working, and actually live, live the last bits of your life and not in the workplace. And this was made by the pension, something of the, something which is credit of the Labour Party, of, um, of further extensions of the pension, of social care for elderly people, and, um, and, uh, economic, uh, no, monetary assistance for the elderly. And when you grow old, in this country, you will be able to be helped out by the government and paid, paid, um, money to keep on, to keep on earning enough to have a decent last two decades of your life, have food, have electricity, have property, everything you need. So, if you want to be able to have a pension, to be able to support it by the government when you reach old age, be appreciative of the Labour Party, because their hard work and sacrifice and the, the workers' movement has really, really guaranteed this. So, finally, unemployment security. Unemployment security is another thing guaranteed by the government most of the time. And it says, if you do lose your job, and if you're back in a place with no money, we're not just going to leave you there to become homeless and starve to death. We're going to say, okay, we're going to help you out. As long as you promise to get back on the tracks and try as hard as you can for a job, we're going to help you out. And we're going to give you a little bit of money, and if you have a bit in, and we're going to ensure that you... Um, we're going to ensure that you... You can have the money you need to sustain life. Because no one, you, anyone can lose their job. Anyone can be laid off, made redundant, be fired for by an angry boss. Like it's not, it's not your fault hardly ever. And even if it is, it doesn't mean you should be be thrown on the streets. Labour government and the Labour governments, and Labour policy and the Labour movement have ensured that if you do lose your job and if you are sacked, you can keep your house as long as you keep working for a job. So. That's it. And I finish by saying, if you don't know what the Labour movement has done for you, and if you think, oh, what's so good about the Labour Party, all of these things, if you're grateful for them, you should be grateful for the Labour Party. The weekend, overtime pay, out -out, eight hour workday, minimum wage, paid holidays, sick days, safety standards, child labour laws, health benefits, the NHS, retirement security and unemployment security. If, you, if you're appreciative of any of these things, they were all brought to you by the Labour Party and the Labour movement and the hard work of people all around this country who wanted to ensure that their children and their grandchildren had a better life than them. So, finally, I wanted to highlight some interesting statistics. Lots of people say Okay, I like the policies done by the Labour Party, I like their new policies, but you can't afford it. And the Labour Labour always ruin the economy. And to these two statements I say, first of all, Jeremy Corbyn's manifesto of last year, it's not yet the new one's been published, not last year, last election, cost £48.6 billion. Quid. The Tories in that same amount of time made £72 billion in tax cuts. So if the Tories economic agenda was affordable not careless the Labour one must be also second of all to people who say that the Labour way through an economy and the Tories are one who are economically responsible listen to this during the last nine years the Tories have borrowed £670 billion pounds. Um, Tories often say it's Labour who always borrow money it took Labour 33 years to borrow £500 billion which just shows 
Tories borrow huge amounts more than the Labour Party. Second of all, Tories and kind of right-wing um, people like to say, oh, when the Labour come in, they destroy the economy. Right, here is um, economic growth, average economic growth from 2000 to 2007 before the financial crash of Blair's, um, of Britain under Blair, the Labour leader. And that was 2.87% economic growth of our GDP, GDP per year. The Tories' economic growth since 2010 has been almost a whole percent less than that, 1.95. So really, if you look at all the economic stat statistics, Labour do better for the economy, borrow less, and cost less than the Tories. So, if you're a proud fan of any of those things, and you're over 18, you should go and vote Labour in the election, because they will carry on making laws like that, which will benefit you in the future. Second of all, if you're under 18, and you think those things are important for you, campaign for the Labour Party, spread the word, and make sure that we get the Tories out and Labour elected in the next election. Thank you very much for watching.